Hello everyone, what's up? In today's video we will see how easy it is to achieve a gritty weathered finish on either a Star Wars ATSC or any other science fiction model of your choice. Whether you are a wargamer or a scale modeler, if you want to learn more about weathering, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell. For this project, instead of applying a dedicated primer and then an undercoat, I went straight for Tamiya XF paints diluted with Tamiya lacquer thinner. As you can see, my initial mix was roughly two parts hull red, one part flat black, and three parts thinner. However, this wasn't as dark as I wanted, so I then added a bit more black. As you can see, I first sprayed this mix in a very thin mist. I always apply a very thin initial coat to all the panels of a whole model or subassembly. As you can see, I keep the airbrush in motion, even though it's really hard to get it wrong with these Tamiya paints, to be honest. More on that later. This is now the second coat, where we're starting to build up opacity, but I'm still going easy on the trigger. The reason I use this method, which takes a bit longer, is that this enhances paint adhesion. In combination with these Tamiya XF paints with lacquer thinner, this creates a very strong bond and a super tough finish. Unlike with an acrylic primer, there is no need to wait 24 hours or longer for the paint to cure. This undercoat will be ready after a mere 30 minutes. So here you can see the results of our undercoat, or undercoat and primer in one if you prefer. Now on to my secret sauce, Humbrol Mascol. What the heck is this, you're asking? Well, it's a liquid mask, which we're going to apply with a kitchen sponge held with pliers. First, we're using some kitchen paper to unload most of the product, just as if we were dry brushing. Then we're going to dab our sponge at raised areas, corners, and other surface details that might get wear and tear in real life. I know this might look really strange to those of you who haven't seen me do this with other models, particularly tanks, but as you will see, it is really an effective technique that can produce unique results that would be almost impossible to replicate to all except the most elite modelers. So if, like me, you are a mere mortal, you might want to give this a try. Another practical reason that I started using liquid mask chipping is that chipping fluid, also known as hairspray chipping, is really hard to get to work with lacquer paints. As you can see, it's very easy to apply the liquid mask. I really have fine control over the placement and the size of the chips, thanks to the consistency of mask oil, which really lends itself perfectly to this. I'd like to mention that I've also tried the liquid mask from Vallejo and from Ammo of MIG, and neither of them were good for this purpose. So, after leaving the liquid mask to dry for about 30 minutes, here we are with the base coat, which again consists of Tamiya XF paints with lacquer thinner. 
Now, I had never painted anything like grey before, actually, so I was kind of experimenting here. My first mixture had a lot of sky grey and just a little bit of flat white, but I soon realized that this was far too dark, so I added some white and then some more thinner. If you have seen some of my other videos, you will know that I alternate between methods and products, but lacquers are definitely my preferred paints when it comes to base coating large models like this. As you can see, I went panel by panel again, trying to build up the opacity gradually. In the end, we get a completely opaque finish. I don't really use pre-shading on my models. At this stage, I would say the base coat looked quite good, but I wanted to add some highlights, even though I knew that some of it would be lost in the chipping stages. When you see what I do to the model, you will understand what I mean. For the highlights, I just added some more white and some more thinner to the mix. Nothing fancy. The drying time before the next stage was something like 20 minutes. So, right now you're probably staring in shock at what I'm doing. Am I really scrubbing my carefully airbrushed model like a maniac with a hard bristle brush? Yes, I am. You can see that I'm peeling the liquid mask, revealing our undercoat, but that is not all. The great friction that I'm applying to our base coat is causing what I like to call mechanical weathering. If you look at the close-up pictures later, you will notice scratches, paint fading and microchipping. These are all very intentional byproducts of my liquid mask chipping method in combination with lacquer paints. Developing this trick is my main claim to fame as a modeler, so to speak, and I would encourage you to give it a try. It's very easy to do and it's extremely satisfying. People often ask me if you could do this with an acrylic base coat. Well, to some extent you could, but you would have to be much gentler with the brush and so mechanical weathering would be out of the question. If you don't want to use lacquer paints, I would recommend using chipping fluid instead, which is what I use for camouflage and stencil work, for example. Now for a spot of varnishing. I'm using Tamiya Clear, again with lacquer thinner. Although our very tough base coats really need no protection, this varnish creates a very smooth, high gloss finish, which greatly enhances the capillary action that we will need for our pin wash. So, time for a pin wash, one of my favorite techniques. I'm using my trusty enamel dark wash by Ammo of Make, slightly thinned with odorless thinner. The other paint well is for me to clean my brush at regular intervals. To apply the pin wash, I'll be using a synthetic liner brush. Here you can see how I lightly dab the surface with a loaded brush, letting the wash flow by itself through capillary action. The enamel wash will easily flow into the recessed areas and all around the details with no effort on your part and without staining the rest of the model. There are always some spills, however, but the good news is, unlike with an acrylic wash, you really have nothing to worry about. We'll deal with them in the next stage. That is why I always say that the pin wash is not only the easiest way to create contrast on our models, but it's also a very relaxing technique.
Before we proceed to the blending stage, it's always best to let your model dry between 2 and 4 hours. Any less than that and the wash will be much harder to manipulate. If you leave it for much longer, like say 24 hours, parts of the enamel will have cured and you won't be able to blend them. For the blending stage, a flat or angle brush, slightly dampened in thinner, works best. Make sure it's not dripping wet, however. What we're doing is dragging or pushing the enamel paint with our brush, slowly but surely removing any excess wash or making accumulate in areas of our choice. Again, you should clean your brush at regular intervals, but taking care not to use it wet. As you can see, this method takes some time, but it's really easy to do and you will have the ability to modulate the previous effect to your liking. To my mind, this is priceless. By the way, I have seen some people use cotton buds instead of a brush. Now, I have used cotton buds myself, for example with Space Marines, but for most applications, I would urge you to use a brush instead. I would say cotton buds are like the WMDs of blending, reserved only for extreme situations. It's important to know that before moving on to the oil dots, I let the model dry overnight in this case, and also applied a coat of Tamiya Flat Clear, which is a matte varnish. Time for an oil dot filter. I was planning on using just three old brushers from Ammo of MIG, namely Buff, Starship Base Lodge, and rust, but as you will see later, I changed my mind about halfway through. To apply the dots, I simply use the applicator brush that comes with this product, picking areas from which rust, rainwater or grime might streak down this vertical surface. I then gently drag the dots down with a synthetic saw brush slightly dampened in odorless thinner. Next, I applied a few more dots of buff to reinforce the effect, but to be honest, the panel still wasn't looking the way it had envisaged, so I removed most of it and gave some more thought to the process. In the meantime, I applied some oil dots to other parts of the vehicle using the method known as tippling, which is normally reserved for horizontal surfaces, for example in a tank's upper hull, where what you want to create is some tonal variation rather than streaking effects. And now back to our problematic panel. I decided to try with dark brown 
and reinforce the streaks coming from some of those chips we had created previously. I also experimented this time with using a completely dry brush with no thinner whatsoever. The result finally matched the image that I had in my head and now I was happy. So here you have the finished results. The only things we're missing in this video are the shading and suit effects, both of which I created by airbrushing a heavily thin black lacquer, and the base, which is a separate Patreon exclusive video. Next week I'll be back with another technique specific tutorial with my recent Panzer 1 build. In the meantime, if you want to know more about the paint wash technique, click on the video on the left. And if you want to see more work with oils, check out the one on the right. Thank you all, and remember, keep it up and weather it out.